You know, one of, it's interesting that somebody brought up wound healing here today. So the number one, you know, red light therapy and particularly pulse light medical technology is known to do a lot of things, support a lot of afflictions, diseases, injuries. But the number one thing I think from a company standpoint is wound healing. And so I wrote a fair amount of articles in, uh, for trade magazines. And one of the ones that was most, um, I guess, memorable to me was uh, from Massage Magazine. And so I wrote this article and a woman who uh, was, she was, she, she was a massage therapist skiing with her, her boyfriend, drove her shoulder into the side of the mountain um, skiing and broke it in 13 places, Oof. plate screws, you know, um, just an incredible amount of damage. And so she went through her reconstruction surgery and the orthopedic flat out said, you know, you're not going to be doing much of anything for 18, 20 weeks. And then we got to go in and remove the, the screws, which is a little bit of healing, but she is a massage therapist. So it's not like, you know, I mean, she's got to be completely healed, especially if she's going to be working on another human because they use their shoulders anyway. So she, she bought a system, worked with uh, it twice a day for six weeks and uh, went in for her six-week uh, checkup. Uh, he x-rayed her and flipped the gasket. He couldn't believe the wound healing, uh, how quick that, that those breaks healed. She was completely healed, and he was like, this can't, I've never seen this in 30 years. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, and, and really, it's, it's one of those things where we know, based on her, her percentages, it approximately was about a 240 to 310% blood increase, mm. blood flow to that biocyte. Whether it was twice a day, she said twice a day. So I mean, I got to take her at face value, and so her healing time was one third, triple the blood flow, reduce the healing time is really what that was all about, and that's a hell of a story to have because it's not an uncommon story. In fact, you're going to hear from Stephanie here in a minute. She's got several people who are actually close. I did not know this woman until we got on the phone from mm-hmm. her um, contact me, but Stephanie actually has some live people. Yeah. So we're going to bring Stephanie in here. And I think you said something in that process of um, the basics of why this is such a powerful thing. Yeah. If we were to just sum it up in, let's say, three bullet points, blood flow would be the primary thing that red I light mean, therapy it, it, is doing. Everything in the body that heals requires blood flow. If it's an injury, if it's a neurological, neuropathic, those all have loss of blood flow. So when you increase blood flow, it's a natural healing process. Your body knows what to do with it. The, the, think about the lights, they kind of direct it to the bio site in which you put them. So that's sort of what it, it that, I mean, that's the essence. Then you have pulse rates, which is a whole other conversation. But blood flow increase is exactly why that woman, that massage therapist, healed. Now, uh, Stephanie. Uh, Hello. Say, so, see, she's got a much more quiet voice. So I'm going to let her jump in and <laughs> talk her about per- wound healing because she's got some, some great stories. Here and we can put some pictures into that. Yeah, definitely. Well. Yeah, absolutely. So I have some uh, accident-prone friends, and three of them um, needed our services when it came to closing some serious wounds. But one of the ones that we first started with was a 35-year-old C-section scar. Um, this woman went in for a C-section 35 years ago. Um, they gutted her. They, they, in, they did an incision from the navel to the pubic bone and then from hip to hip. So it was a huge anchor. Um, it had a, a terrible cleft to it. The color was awful. We have some before and after photos that we can show you. But um, she treated for three months and changed the consistency, the color, the the, re, the skin looked resurfaced. The um, depth, it was more shallow. Yeah, the depth, yeah. the cleft actually surfaced. I mean, the before and after just show it how beautiful mm. this technology works. And even 35 years later, yeah, um, you know, really healing dead tissue. And that's as I was reading more, as I've gotten more farther down this red light uh, therapy and just light therapy in, in general, you know, the blood flow was the primary thing, the vasodilation. Mm-hmm. I learned a new word this past quarter, <laughs> what it's essentially doing. And that's, I think, at the heart of the blood flow. You're just opening up those blood vessels essentially all over to treat. And, and it's essentially just you're nat- doing it naturally what your body wants to do anyways. It- Absolutely right. I mean, look, there's lots of ways to increase blood flow. Viagra or any sexual enhancement drug will increase blood flow. It's got it's a precursor. Well, it's got two, but the primary is sildenafil, and it'll increase uh, blood flow. We all know what it does. We don't need to speak about it here, but uh, blood flow, vasodilation is, is a nitric oxide release, and that can be done through an, in an invasive chemical reaction like a, a sildenafil, which is going to give you the side effects, the headaches, 
or a natural um, a way, and light therapy certainly is the natural way. Yeah, and going back to your friends, uh, uh, like scar tissuing, I was reading more and more that it actually will help rejuvenate scars and rejuvenate that healing process as well not just from new scars but even old scars I'm absolutely looking at. so the th- the c-section was obviously 35 years old yeah. so that was an incredible story um and then more recently we had uh, i had a friend of mine that fell on a turvis tumbler and split her lift completely in half um and she was looking to put a red light panel on it and i panicked and messaged her and said please don't do that let me help you and we br- i brought over some pads and treated her and we have a before and after of just uh, 12 hours where i did three treatments at that night the next morning she woke up and there was a significant difference but tell, but, but first i didn't even know what a tumbler was but second it, it's <laughs> tell her the condi- or tell them the condition i cut right through the lip oh the lip was completely cut in half yeah, yeah. so tell, i mean it's those coffee explain that the yeah so it's one of those hard yeah. thermos the steel steel yeah. tumblers yeah. um and she fell right on it and it completely Ouch. cut the lip and i mean it was a cut a couple inches yeah. and split it um and so when she mm-hmm. got the stitches you know we waited a couple days for the stitches just to settle then started treatments um and she looks amazing i mean she she healed so quickly that her doctors were amazed and and that the color is spot on there's no discoloration um, the faint line scar, it looks like almost a scratch rather yeah. than, you know, what it would have been if she didn't use this type of technology on it. Sheesh. Yeah. And she only treated for about two, three weeks before the, the wound was completely closed and looked amazing. That's a pretty common wow. thing. Wow. Yeah. And then you had the other, and I don't know how she stopped the bike with her face, but oh. you might want to. So my, my other girlfriend, Angie, she went right over the handlebars on her bicycle on a bike ride with her family and used her face as the bike stop. Oof. And she lost all the skin down the center of her face. So her nose, her upper lip, we have before and afters. The doctors wanted to do a skin graft where they were going to take a huge chunk from her upper thigh, move it to her face. And they warned her that the color was going to be off, that yeah. you know, the texture would look different. And this is just was her only option. Either that or scar terribly on her face and be left with a terrible scar. Ugh. So they were trying to talk her into discoloration over the scarring. Um, and she said, no, thank you to all the surgeries that they were suggesting. Called me and said, can you help? And I said, absolutely. And David gifted her a pad for eight weeks and the skin grew completely back. Um, the color in the before and afters is slightly off because it's still so new. It was just mm-hmm. eight weeks. Now you wouldn't even tell that she had any kind of accident. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's the one where they wanted to do a skin graft from a her leg. Skin graft, yeah. Skin. Massive yeah. surgery. Here, yeah. Here's just a general question. Why is this not just common knowledge? I mean, we've seen the, it's, question. as I've gotten reading into this, it's like, it's there. It's not hard to find these results when you start looking, mm-hmm. but like, why isn't it just promoted in, in the medical community? Or why don't we well, see this going more? more into, so I think people are starting to really get the wound healing. I think you still have your, your, your traditional doctors, your, your orthopedics and your, um, cosmetic doctors who, who don't necessarily embrace it, but. It's in, it's in diabetic centers. It's in, um, uh, lesions they're doing. I mean, if a, if an infant is born with jaundice, they'll put them under led light. So they yeah. already know it's a blood flow. It's a vasodilator, mm-hmm. but you got to understand too, you know, we're talking about wounds and so far from a break to what Stephanie just said is all wounds, but you got to understand every neurological and every neuropathic disorder has loss of blood flow. So if you're trying to heal a body, increasing blood flow is the way to go about that and you can do that anywhere from the top of, you know from the head all the way down to the toes so think of this yeah we're saying wound healing and it's a huge thing because after surgeries oral surgeries uh the thing stephanie just defined a broken shoulder uh, so there's a lot of that going on but you also have afflictions that if you could double the or triple the blood flow the healing process would be would be really quite quite dominant yeah you would see some huge success yeah we're just scratching the surface yeah. wound healing is just a topic we're talking about here yeah. but i mean this thing goes far reaching into a lot of different areas yeah yeah you do and i mean i'm not going to get into the organ re- re- replenishment now but you can do another episode just on what we have experienced firsthand mm-hmm. on what this can do in terms of organ restoration and kidney, kidney restoration so we can get into that in another episode yeah but Wound healing is, is pretty incredible. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just that, that's what I'm going to have on the site, basically also just things like where it enhances cellular function, increases collagen production, reduces inflammation. That's probably the big one. Yeah. Because of the blood flow, you're reducing that inflammation speed time, right? Well, and you're doing, I think, the other two, two things, and I hear Stephanie talk about it all the time, na- uh, uh, angio and neurogenesis. Mm-hmm. So to have healthy tissue, to restore tissue, you know, her first story was taking dead tissue, 
30 years old. All she really did was to create capillary beds into that scar tissue and restore the tissue. Well, then the serotums come in, a signal imaging release, which is part of the whole DNA uh, processing, it actually knows that now that, that's healthy, fresh um, tissue. It needs a nerve. So that's why it, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process. But when you can restore microscopic nerves and add capillary beds to tissue that is really either dead tissue or you want to restore like the yeah. tumbler girl who cut her lip off, that's just common science, increasing mm-hmm. blood flow, creating capillary beds, and letting that tissue do its thing. And what was that word again? Angiogenesis? <laughs> Stephanie, you say it better than I Angiogenesis do. and neurogenesis. Angiogenesis yeah. and neurogenesis. One's capillary beds, the other's yeah. restoration of nerves. Yeah. Yeah. So I, like in my head, I just picture tentacles just crawling inside your under your skin that just well, expand out and are able to be replenished in those. Uh... It's not too far off. <laughs> not, to, not, wrong. not too far off. Yeah, 60,000 miles of axons. Yeah. And that's essentially what it is. I mean, and you got a lot of um, nerve signaling equipment in the human body. So something as simple as a scar, you have just el- basically eliminated all those, in my world, tentacles. Yep. And you can restore that tissue. To yeah. tissue. And that's what we're seeing here. Exactly. And those are those right. studies when they're showing this, that, hey, it's proving that it's it's healing, oh, let's yeah. say, a scar. It's proving that it's, it's basically it's that, yeah. essentially. Yeah. And it's quite, quite quantifiable. You mm-hmm. can, yeah. And we can give story after story before pictures. I mean, um, there's another one that I know a gentleman who just recently had a compound break in the, fr- in the cervical, right? And, uh, you know, couldn't get at that scar for, or that, that wound for you know, 30 stitches. It, but he couldn't get at it for the first five days because of the Band-Aids. But if you look at that scar today, it's re- fairly fresh. Um, and you would think, man, that, that, that can't possibly have that kind of healing properties. Well, it does when you can hit it two, three times a day and you do, you know, two, three hundred percent increase in blood flow. I mean... It's simply... Uh, it's just common sense. Well, you you increase the blood flow, you have the removal of waste, and just going back and forth. No, it's a total yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. And it's know? everything. I mean, it, there's no limitations to this. Wound healing is wound healing is yeah. wound healing. And so, the beauty of it yeah. and the magic of it, it's just, it's natural. I yeah, think that's natural. probably just really society. stuns people. It's, it's just like, it's, it's there yeah. already. <laughs> yeah. And, and the subject has to hydrate. I mean, this mm-hmm. isn't just light, you know. You got to drink water and you have to have some new... Uh, some good nutrition, but that's, that's basic life, simple rules. Mm-hmm. So hydrate and have some uh, good nutrition, use lights and I think the yeah. results will, will be actually quite good. With those on results, if somebody were to buy a NeuroCare Pro piece and because they wanted to fix a wound, fix a scar, are, are, do, are there certain settings already set for that? Is as that part of the frequency chart that they get as well? Do they go through that process or Absolutely. is it, is, yeah. are there different levels of depending on is it if it's new or if it's something that's been there 20 years so the frequencies that are within our controllers are no j frequencies so they're known to heal the body create a cellular change so um for example with wound healing i always suggest to people when it's a new scar or a certain new surgical area definitely hit it with 73 hertz Mm -hmm. Um, you're going to see an activation of bone stimulation you'll see the wound close the collagen boost is incredible on that Um, setting. And then when people are a little bit further along, I always suggest 294. It's amazing for inflammation. It's great for, um, if, especially if it was surgery, it's great for soft tissue repair. So if say somebody has to deal with, um, scar tissue from ligaments being cut or, you know, uh, tendons, you know, that's a great one to put them on to help heal that. And then as they're going into the healing phase, the cosmetic setting is how I would suggest for them to finish Mm -hmm. so that we can make sure that the scar looks the best that it can, that we can get all that fresh blood flow to the area. Um, so the cosmetic setting goes through 10 different frequencies. Um, in you a setting. can't, you can't overdo this. Can you like, let's say a person says, I want to treat this every day or two times a day or three times a day. No, no, absolutely. So you can treat multiple times within a day, um, as long as you're fully hydrated and have yeah. that nutrition, that good nutrition going for you. But, um, no, you really, there's no contraindications of using this type of technology. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, someone could suggest give it, give it time between sessions. Yeah. We've seen positive results when they don't. Yeah. So I think it's a lot, which, what Stephanie just summed it up. I mean, hydrate properly, have good nutrition. I think your body will, it'll accept the energy. It, it's not going to be like a biphasic. Yeah. Say, oh, well, it works. Oh, I used it too much. It's not working. Right. It's just kind of like you're wasting your time after a certain point. Your body can no longer process that much energy. Yeah. And so that's kind of really the worst thing that could happen is you're just kind of wasting. If you say, hey, I did two hours, an yeah, hour probably would have been enough, maybe an hour and 20. Mm-hmm. But you don't know that in, until you start getting into this technology. Gotcha. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, thank you all for that brief introduction. Well, thank and that you, was, Brian. That was yeah. our walkthrough on... 
red light and wound healing. Awesome. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a pretty incredible uh, category. Yeah. 